what's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters as well as my pre-healthcare professionals alike. I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day. Today we are going to continue on with the English and language usage review portion of the ATITs and we're going to be discussing two different topics, subject verb agreement and verb tenses. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and better yet, hit that bell notification. It lets you know when I post new content here on YouTube. Give this video a big thumbs up, that way it lets other people know that this is a good review video for the ATIT's exam and helping you pass it like a boss. Understanding Subject Verb Agreement The subject of a sentence must always agree with its verb. This means that the subject and verb must both be either singular or plural. Subject verb agreement questions address whether there is a match between single or plural subjects and verbs. Consider the following example. Her niece was never in the mood to play hopscotch. This is correct. The subject of a sentence, her niece, is singular. The verb, was, is also singular. The sentence has subject verb agreement because the subject and verb are both singular. Let's take a look at this example. Her nieces was never in the mood to play hopscotch. Incorrect. In this case, the subject is plural, her nieces, refers to more than one niece. The sentence requires the plural verb were. Lastly, her nieces were never in the mood to play hopscotch. This is correct. The singular verb was in the incorrect sentence was replaced by the plural verb were. Now the subject and the verb are both plural, so the subject and verb agree. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Why doesn't your grandfather like to fish? This is correct. The subject here, grandfather, is singular. The verb doesn't like is also singular. The sentence has subject-verb agreement. Why doesn't your grandfather and grandmother like to fish? Incorrect. Whenever a subject contains two nouns joined by the word and, this makes the subject plural. Since the subject of the sentence is now plural, the sentence needs the plural verb. Why don't your grandfather and grandmother like to fish? This is correct. The singular verb doesn't like from the sentence above has been replaced with the plural verb don't like. The subject and the verb are both in plural form, so they now agree. Let's start with understanding verb tenses. Verb tenses are used to show when the action is taking place in the sentence. When understanding simple tenses, the most common verb tenses are past, present, and future. If the action of the sentence is taking place in the past, the verb showing the action should be in the past tense. If the action of the sentence is taking place in the present, the verb showing the action should be taking place in present tense, and so on and so forth. Verb tense questions address the correct use of verb tenses and whether a verb phrase matches the tense used in the rest of the sentence. The following example is written in the past tense. It contains the past tense phrase yesterday. Andrew received his class award yesterday. This is correct. The verb received correctly indicates that the action of the sentence takes place in the past. Another example, Andrew received his class award tomorrow. This is incorrect. This sentence is incorrect because the past tense verb received does not make sense in the context of the sentence. Here, we have a future tense phrase, tomorrow. The correct verb for this sentence is will receive to place this sentence in the correct future tense. Andrew will receive his class award tomorrow. Let's take a look at a new set of examples. She is choosing between her two top colleges today. That's correct. The sentence correctly shows its action taking place in the present. It contains the present tense phrase today and uses the present tense verb choosing. She is choosing between her two top colleges last week. That doesn't make any sense. The sentence also contains the present tense verb phrase choosing. However, the phrase last week indicates that the action of the sentence took place in the past. This sentence is written incorrectly. Last example, she chose between her two top colleges last week. That sentence is correct. This sentence reads that she chose between her two top colleges last week to show clearly that the action took place in the past. Now let's take a look at progressive tenses. 
Progressive tenses are the present progressive, past progressive, and future progressive. They show that an action is in progress. These tenses are also sometimes called continuous tenses. Present progressive is formed subject plus am, is, or are plus an ing ending verb plus an object. For example, my teacher is assigning us a mountain of homework. We've all been there, haven't we? Past progressive is formed subject plus was or were with a ing ending verb plus an object. For example, the rabbit was running for hours. Future progressive is formed subject plus will be plus an ing ending verb plus an object. I will be sleeping when you get back. Sounds pretty good to me. Perfect tenses are the present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. Present perfect tense shows that an action is recently completed or was completed at an indefinite time in the past. The tense is formed subject plus has or have plus past participle verb plus an object. My teacher has assigned a mountain of homework. Past perfect tense shows an action that was completed directly before another action was completed. For example, the tense is formed subject plus had plus past participle verb plus object. The rabbit had run for hours until it found shelter. And lastly, future present tense shows an action that will happen before another action happens. The tense is formed subject plus will have plus past participle verb plus object. I will have fallen asleep by the time that you get back. Lastly, understanding perfect progressive tenses. Perfect progressive tenses are the present perfect progressive, past perfect progressive, and future perfect progressive. They show that an action in the perfect tense is in progress. These tenses are also sometimes called perfect continuous tenses. Present perfect progressive is formed subject plus has or had been plus an ing ending verb plus object. My teacher has been assigning us a mountain of homework all year. Past perfect progressive is formed subject plus had been plus an ing ending verb plus object. The rabbit had been running for hours. Lastly, future perfect progressive is formed subject plus will have been plus an ing ending verb plus object. I will have been sleeping for hours by the time that you get home. I hope that this video has helped for you to pass your ATITs like a boss the first time. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you head over to my website at www.nursechung.com where there are additional resources related to the topics that we discuss here in these videos. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, as well as here on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. But until next time, I hope that y'all have a wonderful day and I will speak with you all again soon in our next video. Bye.